Hi, I'm Audrey, the host of My Tar Heel Adventures. Today we're at the Barbecue Fest on the Noose in Kinston, North Carolina. Stay tuned for food, fun, and festivities and an all new My Tar Heel Adventures. This episode is brought to you by Gator Metal Roofing, official partner of the Carolina Hurricanes. Guys, we are here with Miss Tammy Kelly, who is the chair of the Whole Hog Cook-Off. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going on with the Barbecue Festival? Sure. This is our 42nd year um, hosting the Whole Hog Cook-Off, which is how the Barbecue Festival started. Mm -hmm. And it started just as a hook cooking competition and grew into a whole festival. Um, we started with like 21 pigs. We have some cooks that are cooking today that have cooked the whole 42 years. Wow. So it's pretty cool. That's amazing. Um, and today we have 87. So we brought we have 87 pigs. contestants yes. or oh, pigs. Mm -hmm. Wow. So there's 87 cooks cooking 87 pigs. In the morning at 8 o'clock, they'll be judged. I have two categories. I have backyard and professional. And it's a tough competition. It's the biggest one in the state. Or it's the biggest one in the whole southern region, really. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is amazing. 87 whole hogs. Mm -hmm. What is the significance of doing the whole hog? Um, it's, a, it's sort of a pure way to cook it. And it's, it's uh, celebrating our heritage, I think, of yeah. the whole hog. Uh, industry in North Carolina, especially in Eastern North Carolina. Mm -hmm. When they cook, they don't use, they don't sauce while they're cooking. They don't do pepper. They just they can use salt. They can use one or two other things, and that's it. So it's a real pure, fine heritage way of cooking the pig. Wow, that is incredible. I yeah. love that. And so in the morning, smelling good. We'll be smelling good. Mm -hmm. Hogs will be cooked, and then we have the contest. Right. They, when they judge at eight o'clock, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, we'll do the winners at one. And then once they take the pig off the grill, they bring it over to our chop tent and it's chopped and sauced and sold. So how many people would you say show up to the barbecue fest? Last year we counted 100,000 people on Friday night. It's crazy. With this perfect weather, we're kind of expecting to have that kind of crowd tonight. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for your time, Miss Timmy. It's good to meet y'all. Good to meet you. Good to have y'all with us. We're looking forward to the rest of the barbecue fest. Oh, you'll love it, I promise. Oh, yeah. Well, Mayor Hardy, um, what is the significance of the barbecue festival to you, the city, and the county? It's indeed an economic boomer for the city and county. We have folks that come from all over to the eastern part of the state to the largest barbecue festival in the east. So we're definitely excited. You know, our hotels are filled up. Yes. You know, people are getting gas at the you know, gas stations. So hopefully they're going to run out of gas. Uh, I'm excited to be here that you bring all these folks together you know, and be able to have, you know, our small businesses boom at this particular time. So it's definitely an asset to Kinsley, North County. So we're excited to have it every single year, you know, 30 to 40,000 people show up and this is what it's about. You know, having fun, you know, eating barbecue, chicken, uh, fish, uh, turkey barbecue, uh, et cetera. All you know, of it. You know, hush puppies and all that good stuff. <laughs> you know, uh, celebrating and having fun. And, 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 you know, some folks actually get to make money out here uh, you know, during this special time. So yes. we're excited to have the barbecue festival every year. Mayor Hardy, what is your favorite type of barbecue? It's going to be turkey barbecue. Okay. You know, I don't uh, necessarily eat pork <laughs> or beef. Mm -hmm. So I love turkey, you know, fish, chicken type guy. Yeah. And turkey barbecue is my number one, okay. you know, so I love it. You know, Eastern North Carolina has the best sauce. You know what I'm saying? We got, we have the sauce. See, you know, this is what we do oh, yeah. uh, in the South. All right, well, thank you so much, Mayor. Where can we find you online? All right, so I can be reached uh, on social media, Facebook, um, Instagram. I'm actually reached on Twitter as well. So it'll be Mayor Don Hardy, uh, and either one of them. So Mayor Don Hardy, you'll find me. Sounds good, thank you so much. Thank you so much, <laughs> appreciate it. We are here with Mr. BJ and Miss Alisa of News News. How are you guys doing today? Fantastic. Good. Thank you guys for taking the time to chat with us. 
We're super excited. So can you tell us a little bit about um, what you guys are covering here at the festival? Well, well news news, we cover, gosh, I mean, just so much happening here. There's 150 plus vendors here, sure. uh, 40,000 people be here. So, I mean, what is there not to cover from everything from the chop tent that's behind us that will be slamming tomorrow with the cadence of chopped and barbecue mm -hmm. to the uh, musicians behind us, all the way to the vendors down the street. What else are you excited about? Uh, definitely the live music. Nashville recording artist Easton Corbin will be taking the stage tonight at 8.30 oh, cool. p.m. That's always a big treat for the people here in the community. Um, it's a free concert. It doesn't cost them anything to come and enjoy it. So I'm really looking forward to the music, the bands, the entertainment, the DJs. Um, that's always a good time for me. Awesome. And are you guys going to check out the laser show? Oh, the laser? I, that, I'm really excited about He's that. so excited. I yeah, because I'm like, I've never seen, I mean, I've seen fireworks, but I've never seen a laser show. And I think that the people who are going to be most excited about it are going to be the kids. Yes. And at the end of the day, that's what this really is about. Getting the kids exposed to our culture, our community, and all the good things about, uh, about Kinston. Awesome. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So how long have you guys been covering the Barbecue Fest? Uh, and BJ, you used to be the mayor I, here. Yeah, I was the mayor and I volunteered before that. So I've actually been involved in one way, whether it was giving the keys away to handling social media, uh, to hauling barbecue for, gosh, it's uh, 22 years or so. Wow. So I've been involved for a long time as an organization. This is our fifth year covering it. It is. It's been really fun to be a part of the behind the scenes, to work in you know, all of the promotions online. And like BJ, having been born and raised here, we both remember when the barbecue festival was called Hog Happening. Hog Happening, out on the highway. Right. Out on the highway. <laughs> right. So we've both been able to watch it grow and develop into what it is today. And then a full circle moment for us to both grow up and come back and be a part of a business here yeah. that helps promote that festival to other communities and our own community is just, it's just a proud moment for Absolutely. us for sure. Wow, Absolutely. that is so incredible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. BJ, you were downtown Kinston director first, and then you became mayor. So, from all of that, what have you seen as far as the economic impact of the festival? I mean, certainly uh, for all the 150 vendors that are here, uh, we, especially with the beautiful weather, we're expecting them to sell out from yeah. the uh, the fried cookie dough to the t-shirts <laughs> that we have, over a thousand t-shirts ready to be sold. All those things are really important. Uh, when you think about that, $20, $25 a head coming through, it's a, it's a large impact. But also the local uh, businesses, the restaurants, the uh, the alcohol establishments that are in downtown Kinston, I suspect there are several hundreds of thousands of dollars coming through this area in about a day and a half time frame. Mm -hmm. For a town of 20,000 people in a very poor, honestly, uh, community, yeah. uh, it's, a, it's a really big financial impact. Everybody from the person who waits on a table to the person who who owns the dumpster company, everybody will benefit financially in this community. Absolutely. Oh yeah, definitely. Absolutely, and when we were talking about the hog happening, which was, I don't know, what, BJ, 25 right. 30, years, 30 yeah, it's years ago. Yeah, years now. I'm sure there was probably two to 4,000 people maybe that walked through that, but we know because uh, Leon's still here with downtown Kinston, they, they worked to do some geofencing to get some statistics and some information, and we actually know that last year there were over 40,000 people that came through this festival, and that did not include children or people that Correct. were not holding a cell phone. No, no, wow. So, really just the cell phone. Yeah, yeah, so it has tremendously grown, and there's no way that that many people in our community over a two-day period that our people and our businesses are not feeling the impact of that. Right. right. Where can we find you guys on social media? Uh, you can find our, our social media company, magicmilemedia.com, which is named after the historic Queen Street area, the Magic Mile, magicmilemedia.com, and also our local news business, is at newsnews.com, N-E-U-S-E, news.com. Thank you guys so Thank much. Thank you so much. Appreciate Thank it very you. much. Enjoy yes, the festival. Thank you. Yeah, you. you too. Make sure you t have time to have a little fun too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. There's 30,000 plus people out there. There needs to be a lot of screen for that.
bit about how the festival came together and what are your thoughts on how everything's going. This is the 42nd year of our barbecue festival. It started south of town in a warehouse with like 10 cooks. Wow. We ended this year with 88 cook teams. Mm -hmm. um, they cook overnight. We judge everything Saturday morning. We have a car show with I don't know how many cars. Right. We have over 150 vendors. We got a helicopter, a carnival, a kid zone. It's just a family friendly event that Kinston has once a year, the first weekend every May. We, can, we start, to be honest, as soon as this is over, next week we start meeting for next year. So wow. we'll start throwing out ideas and grabbing the ones that work. So be on the lookout for all kinds of new stuff. All right, well, we're definitely looking forward to it. Thank you so much for your Thank time. You. Thank you. Hi guys, we're here with Billy Naren of Wicked Pig, who is this year's first place winner for the barbecue cook-off. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. It was a long night, but it was a lot of fun. It's always better when you end with a check and a, and a trophy, you know, it's a lot of fun. We do a lot of work and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's fun. That is amazing. So Billy, how long have you been cooking pigs? I've been cooking competitively for uh, five years. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my fifth year. Um, I bought this grill about three years ago and it's been a learning curve but basically I'm getting it figured out but uh you know it's the same group of guys every weekend we see each other all the time you know uh -huh. we help each other but it's uh you know it's just a great hobby <laughs> <laughs> what we do you can only use uh, salt oil baking soda and um, water that's wow. the only that's the only prep you can use and uh, we all basically do the same thing but you know maybe do it in a different amount or do it at different times but there are strict rules you can't you have no rub no injection you know no seasoning on the meat so it's right. a it's a very strict uh, set of rules that we have to follow yeah I make my own sauce most everyone out here does I mean there's a few guys that might use a store-bought sauce but most everyone has their take on, on what good barbecue sauce is and that's one of the main criteria for uh, the judging is your sauce taste uh, yeah, that and having crispy skin, that's very important as well. And uh, that, those two are the, probably the main categories that you want to do well in. If you do well in both of those, normally you do well in the contest. That was right. amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, thank you. Mr. Dan Sell, who is with the Carolina Classic Cars, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the club and the car show. Um, we've been doing the car show for about 15 years. It gets bigger and bigger every year. We've, they've paved the parking lots. We're kind of like the center of the barbecue festival, which has been going on for about 45 years now. Today we have about 165 show cars. Our maximum was like 206 in 2005. So we're standing in front of some very beautiful cars. Can you um, talk a little bit about it? We've got Camaros and Corvettes and Chevelles and uh, Challengers, every kind of car. This year we have a new rat rod um, uh, category too. Right over there you'll find some rat rods below 30s. So how does the judging work? The judging works, um, there is a top car and a top truck for the event. There's a top car 1990 and below and a top car 1991 and above same with trucks mm -hmm. and then there'll be best paint best engine and then uh, dealer's choice I'll, I'll vote on that one at the end mm -hmm. but uh, we'll be doing that at two o'clock today 
All right, looking forward to it. Yep. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Sample barbecue sauce. Either with the pork skin or have it without a pork skin, whichever okay. you prefer. Okay. What's the, the name of um, it's Blue Miss Barbecue? This is Blue Miss Barbecue. Ashboro. Yes. And this is a sample with pork skin. And mine is plain. Mmm. It's like sweet. Sweet and tangy is what sweet I Sweet and tangy. Got a little uh, kick on the back end. I actually like that a lot. Thank you. Yeah, it's really good. Good on chicken or pork, beef, whichever you prefer. Oh, yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. Well, I'm excited for the food and the rides that we're going to go on soon. Uh huh. And walking around, honestly. There's a cook off tomorrow. There's oh. 87 hogs that are going to be cooked off. There's going to be a contest. Oh, no, so come back. <laughs> come back tomorrow. <laughs> oh, I'm so sad. Um, I'll try to come back tomorrow if I don't have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon is one of our new downtown merchants, House of Ink. He doesn't like tattoos, though, personally. He's Not allergic. Not scared of needles. <laughs> this is my daughter. This is going to be my up and coming artist. Hey, how are you? <laughs> yeah. So Maybe. we're happy to have him downtown. Love the name of the business. It's, it's really like a stu uh, art studio rather than a, and a gallery rather than a tattoo studio. So are you a native, Kinston native? Uh, yeah. Awesome. So what what brings you back to the barbecue festival every year? Uh, probably the rides, the helicopter rides especially. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. You're welcome. who is the chair of the Lenore County Commissioners. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I hope y'all are enjoying this and we thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. We are really enjoying ourselves here at the Barbecue Festival. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Miss Linda, can you talk to us a little bit about how the Barbecue Festival has grown and changed over time? Yes, it started out very small and it was sort of away from an agriculture base for folks to get together and celebrate their talents of cooking pigs and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And then since then, it's just grown and just unreal. We have anywhere from 40 to 45,000 people from all over adjoining counties and out of state. And anytime that happens, of course, it makes your commissioners and your governing bodies very happy because that's more coming taxes coming into the Lenoir County because yes. of restaurants because of motels and because of people spending money mm -hmm. as well as it gives you exposure to other areas so we're just so glad to host and have all these folks here and show our true southern hospitality and like i said our cooperative extension has done a great job of, of coordinating the fort part of it yeah. and then from there it grew from different volunteers and the, and the uh, city and county who came together and said well why don't we have vendors and, why don't we have a car show and you know all kinds of things why don't we have a special section for the kids and so it's really become a family-based event 
and so it's something everybody can come and have fun. It's good for a young couple that wants to go out on a date, so to speak, but it's good for a family to bring their kids and, you know, go and enjoy like we had the uh, characters like the Snow White and the princesses and stuff for the kids yes, today. The Disney character. Yeah, so yeah. it's really just an all around good event for folks. And we just love seeing our citizens here and they get to know folks from our sheriff's department, our police department and you know, we just try to let them know and showcase our services that we provide as well as having all these other vendors available. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Thank y'all for coming so much. It's a pleasure for us to have you and host you. We hope you've enjoyed our hospitality. We have. And it's come back amazing. next year. We will. <laughs>Hi guys, we're here with Mr. Stephen Hill, and he is a Kinston native. Mr. Hill, you've been coming to the to the barbecue festival over the years. How have you seen it progress? Well, it's gotten a lot larger than it used to be. We used to be just in the park over here, uh, where the fair is right now, um, and it was probably 40 teams. Now they have over 100, so it's grown quite a bit. Um, and on good weather days like today, you have a ton of people come out. So you'll see these streets full in just a little while. Oh yeah, looking forward to it. And speaking of such, what are you looking forward to at the festival? Selling a lot of beer and whiskey and gin and yeah, so that and and the mo one of the most fun things to do is at night when everybody's kind of gone, go and go through the cooks teams and then you know socialize with them and watch them cook the pigs. It's a lot of fun. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Enjoy your time in Kingston. Thank you. Hi guys, we're here with Travis Stanley Harper of Stanley Saloon. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. I'm that, doing great. That is good to hear. So we know you have some really exciting things coming up here at the Barbecue Festival. Can you talk to us a little bit about it? Absolutely. So today, uh, Saturday, beautiful day outside. We got a amazing uh, appearance and crowd out here. Um, we're kind of, we just got a little, uh, me and my buddy Dylan here, we just got a pet and zoo situation uh, hooked up. We're going to be doing a pig race, which is our second time doing a pig race at the barbecue festival. It usually draws a lot of kids and everybody wants to come out here and see the pigs. Yeah. And, uh, and after that, I figured we switch it up this year and do a chicken catching contest out in the backyard after the pig race. Oh, wow. Yeah, we do. Okay. Oh, you have one going on now. I think so. I think one got out and now they're trying to catch it. So <laughs> they're getting a little practice in over there on the other side of the fence. That's so cool. So um, it seems like you have so much going on right here in the community. What are some new things you have coming up? Okay, so just to, if you don't know, I own a restaurant with my best friend Dylan called Harpin Deals Bar and Grill. And I'm about to open up a new bar called The Mullet which represents this, this luxurious hairstyle, business in the front, party in the back. And it's going to be located right beside Sugar Hill on Heritage Street. And it's going to be more of a uh, lost in time in the old Hollywood era, disco speakeasy, kind of bringing that nostalgic, real deal Sugar Hill back to Kinston. I'm trying as hard as I can to, uh, to get a show going here. It's Basically just based off Kinston everyday life. We kind of have, we really do live a pretty exciting life here. Uh, every day is different and uh, I would really, really love to see tourism back booming in Kinston. I think uh, getting a show out there would uh, help showcase how great our town is, how great our community is, and uh, just how interesting the vibe is here in Kinston. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button and turn on those bell notifications to keep up with all of our adventures. Now I'd like to thank Gator Metal Roofing for sponsoring today's video. Let's check in with a recent customer to see how their experience was. Hi guys, we're here in Hubert, North Carolina and we're speaking with a recent customer of Gator Metal Roofing, Mr. Chivers. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. That is so great to hear. Now, Mr. Chivers, you recently got a glossy black gator metal roof installed. Can you talk to us about why you chose that color? Uh, my wife liked that color, nice. so it's the right color. Good answer. Now, Mr. Chivers, how was your experience working with gator metal roofing? It went pretty quick. You know, I found them on the internet, and they came out right away, did the estimate. Within about exactly a month, the, uh, they were ready for delivering the 
components and they made them right here on the property. They, they did a really good job if you look at the roof and it rained yesterday so I, I'm right now I'm thinking that was the test. So Awesome, so we're so glad to hear that your experience working with Gator was a good one. Uh, with that being said, you mentioned you found us online. Were you on our website, on our social media pages? So I googled it looking at metal roofs. I've had other companies come out mm -hmm. and a lot of the companies that came out didn't even though they say they specialize in metal roofs, they steered right towards the shingles. And if I wanted a shingle roof, I probably would have kept what I had, but we're in a hurricane prone area mm -hmm. and we've had enough of the shingles. So I want to keep my roof in my yard. So that's why I got a metal roof. I love it. So Mr. Chivers, would you recommend us to any of your friends and family? Oh yeah, I would let them know. It's, uh, it, it went pretty smooth. The metal roofs are going to cost you money no matter who you go with. Mm -hmm. So the thing here is, uh, I understand the lifetime warranty. Yes. Yeah. So at my age, the Gator Company's getting off pretty easy. Well, thank you so much for going green with the Gator. All right, thank you. All right.